you so much for coming. Let me restart now that I've composed myself. <laughs> it always takes me like a second to kind of compose myself after I get going here. Um, so just briefly, I'm just going to share with you. So I'm doing this as kind of just a pet project in addition to my business I'm starting. Um, I'm talking to people about dating, relationships, mm. um, what they do, how they do it. Sometimes it gets a little dicey. Sometimes I'm pretty calm. I don't know. It, you know, it's all over the board. Depends on how well I know everybody. But um, sure. obviously we're just meeting. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on. That's why I invited you here is to kind of discuss your life and what mm -hmm. you got going on in your life. Yeah. Um, and now you have some projects you're working on too. So tell me about what you do. Yeah, so first and foremost, I'm a musician. Um, okay. Like I was saying a little bit earlier. So that's I've been doing that for most of my life. Um, various different projects. Uh, this, during COVID, during the whole shutdown process, I, so I've been a drummer for 30 years. Oh, drummer, okay. I was a drummer. Um, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> It's not very good. That's the response <laughs> I get when I tell people I'm a drummer. They, Everybody says they're drummer. Like, oh yeah, I play drums. I do. <laughs> in junior high, I was. I actually thought I was really good. I did win some awards. Yeah, right on. But then all the other guys, like everybody else, is a boy drummer, and I just I couldn't hang. I was so, like, meh. Something to be said for female drummers. Yeah, though, I kind of wish I would have stuck with it. It's a cool thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, but then I really, the older I get, I, I can't keep it together. So I. It would have, it would have faded out at some point, but anyhow, so that's cool. So you're a drummer. Yeah. So, so I, I'm still doing that. I've done that across the board, touring records, the whole deal. Okay, cool. Um, and like I said, during the shutdown, I started writing material, um, on other instruments and, and have since put that out. So I do have a solo side project thing out there. Um, and then I, uh, I do a podcast and I also uh, am in the process of um, doing becoming a hairdresser. So, yeah. So that is uh, that's something that's just about finished and it's kind of all fits together, you know, in terms yeah. of like an artistic. I was life. just going to say, yeah, you have, it's a very all the artistic life components all kind of form a big circle because they're all things you can do. Well, actually, yeah, they're all very time-consuming things. Learning to do hair is very time-consuming. It, it is. Um, it is very time-consuming. The podcast is time-consuming yeah, um, because there's a lot of so editing fun. involved. Editing. You That's know, the like, conversation. That takes much longer than the, the actual <laughs> interview. Yeah, the conversation <laughs> is great. Um, it's it's everything. I have a whole, season two is it's in the can. It's just nice. all the editing is like my least favorite. A nightmare. Thing. You know. It is. Yeah. It is. So we're just gonna make this perfect, so we don't have to edit one word. <laughs> what? What made you decide you wanted to do hair? I actually think that guys doing hair, you. Um, I had mentioned to him before that part of a job that I had when I first moved out here was I used to go around to high schools and talk to kids about doing hair, and I used to do um, work for a cosmetology school and uh, recruiting and stuff like that. And I actually loved when guys would come up to me. Like mm. at first, they would kind of do it like as a joke. But then I love talking to them because male hairdressers make so much money. <laughs> Women love getting their hair done by men yeah. because like yeah. they love like those big man hands and they love the male attention. And so I always tell guys, I'm like, honestly, it's a great career for a man. It's really quite lucrative. So what it, made you decide to get into that? So it's, it's actually a long time. It's a long time coming. Mm -hmm. So I would be you know, I pursued music straight away, straight out of high school. I got, you know, signed a contract, the whole deal. I was living in New York City, and this is the most um, like vivid memory I can say where I thought about it was that I got, I came off tour. I was walking around somewhere in New York, and I remember seeing it must have been a school because I remember seeing just people in this through this window, and they were, you know, it looked like somebody was teaching, and there was mm -hmm. all these students, and they were. You know, and I thought, man, that's so cool, you know, and then all the barbers that I know and the, you know, salons I've been to in my right. life and getting my own haircut. And meeting hairdressers and, meeting and they're hairdressers. crazy eclectic people. And, and Well, they were just like me and they were just <laughs> right. like, you know, personality wise, they were just like all the people that were on tour and mm -hmm. they were, you know, they loved entertainment. And, mm -hmm. and so, it, you know, it started way back then right? Um, with this idea that maybe one day I would do that. Um, and it just life took its turns and twists and I kept doing things other than that. Um, at one point I got a psychology degree 
Okay. You know, so a bunch of different stuff um, has happened. And then um, I just decided one day, I was like, I'm going to go do this. It's something that I've been wanting to do mm-hmm. to do for like 15 years. Always um, been burning in your mind. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I was like, um, well, COVID happened. So music was off the table. Everybody's everything switched. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. My project that I was supposed to have started right before COVID hit, I was like, well, we'll see you guys in a year or two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, and right at that particular time, too, there was no like, well, we're going to open. You know what I mean? Mm. It was still like open ended. So yeah. um, so I just I did it. And it, this is like the third time I've signed up. Oh, OK. And so I've actually followed through at this point now and I'm getting nearing the end of this whole process. And so um, so, yeah, and it, and it was it, it was the perfect fit like I always thought it would be. You oh, know, nice. I actually have it a, a, a pretty good eye for it. And it, it turns out that, yes, it is um, artistic, but it's a lot more architectural yeah, in terms of building. It's and, geometry. Yeah. A lot of geometry, people. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that's what that's what haircutting is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so but then, uh, you know, like what you said, a lot of the instructors have been like, you know, straight male in this industry, mm. pretty much. I mean, you're going to world have, is your oyster. Yeah. Yeah, and do what you want. <laughs> how much you want to make? The craziest part about it is this: it's a woman Men telling me. Men win again. A woman Just telling kidding. me this in the sea of other women I pursuing know. this career. I know. And she's like, he's go- he's going to be the one to make more money than all of you. It sucks. And I I just I was like, oh my god, I can't believe she said yeah. that. But it's it, I mean, it's not one hundred percent true. Like you have to obviously right. have the skill. You have to come to the table with the the skill set and the people skills and you have to come to the table with some of that yeah but the odds are stacked in your favor to some degree you know women do find it to be a little bit of like uh I, I can't even think of the right word like they they just think it's like a, um oh my hairdresser is a guy like they yeah. love that yeah. they, it's like you're the anomaly you know <laughs> and so they're like they want to tell everybody about it so I used to work with a guy and um, I called him my work husband and mm. he was like really tall and he had these huge man hands and if I was going on vacation or something I'd like keep your big man hands off my, my clothes <laughs> <laughs> because I'd come back and I'd be like John gave me the best massage and I'd be like awesome that's, that's great you're not you don't go to Don you don't talk to him anymore <laughs> well that was that's one of the things they said too is uh, the instructor she said um, same woman she goes if I was going to go to work in a salon and I saw him there, I'd set up in a chair right next to him. So that way, whenever I was done with my client, I can ask him, how, what does it look like? Yeah. And then I get, you know, I'm giving out these accolades. Yep. Oh, you look so beautiful. It looks great. Yeah. Does this Women to your features. Fun. Yeah. And then she makes money, you yeah. know? So it's just, it's like. You play off each other. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That, that is, that is the salon life for sure. Yeah. Um, well, good for you. That's exciting. Yeah. It's fun. Um, so what do you like better? Color cutting? I love to cut. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind. I I also love color. Blonding is not something I like. Yeah. Um, That was kind of one of my specialties. Well, it's It's hard. It's so tedious. Yeah, very tedious. And I had to learn it the hard way. Everything shows (laughs) when you're blonding. So it's like, you know, I do it a lot, um, but I I much prefer to cut. Cutting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I get that because you're a guy and you're probably a little bit more on the analytical side. Even yeah. though you're creative, men tend to be a little bit more analytical in yeah. that respect. I like the steps. I mm-hmm. like it broken down, and I like to see it going as I'm, you yeah. know, as I'm doing. Immediate this. gratification. Yes, correct. <laughs> that piece is gone. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, gotcha. Well, that's cool. Good for you. I, I hope that that works out really well. And um, thank you. I'm sure as long as you put in the work, I'm sure it will work out really well, as we talked about, for the reasons we talked about. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, it can be a very lucrative business. I don't think people give hairdressers enough credit. Maybe they are starting to in these years, but um, it's a craft. Like, you have to work really hard at it, and it's a business that you have to build, and you have to, like, be responsible for that. It's really hard to build that business. And, yeah, yeah you can make really good money, but it, it takes a long time. It's... Um, it's a, it's hard work to get started in that business, but it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's it one can of those, be well worth it. It's one of those things I think is um, it's a you know I kind of liken it to like even serving tables or bartending where you know you have you're a business within a business mm-hmm. and you know it's really up to you how much you're gonna make and it, it's all about the people skills you know yeah. as much as it, as much as it is about your ability right um, you know it's a uh, it's sort of a 
people have talked sh- shit about you have it, to you, you know? have to be really comfortable talking to almost anybody yeah. about anything you yeah. have to have a really good sense of yourself and your ability to talk what you can talk about mm. and you have to be somewhat well-rounded in a number of different things and it sounds like you're well-traveled and you yeah. you're very comfortable talking to people but it is a skill it's a skill set and um, well, i think for a long time it was thought of as like a frivolous right thing you know yeah. what i mean it's a, no, i don't think a lot of people know exactly what time what type of uh time and effort it goes into right you know honing that craft so. yeah exactly yeah um so i i didn't even ask are you a single guy yes okay single guy didn't ask good thing we got that out of the way <laughs> <laughs> wow okay i nailed it Woo. <laughs> um so I mean, obviously, you've led some lifestyles, which you have had a lot of experience in dating and meeting people. Mm-hmm. Um, so you said right out of high school, you got a music contract. Yeah. So what what kind of music do you play? Now is very different from then. Uh, predominantly now, I do mostly reggae. Oh. Yeah. I know. See? I know. <laughs> Most people think I play Good metal or rock or something <laughs> just by the way that I look. Right, but, right. Uh, but no, it's... Okay. It's uh, a lot of it is reggae, some roots, um, some of it more like Southern California style, like sublime leaning. Okay, um, like a little bit more ska type type of. Not not so much ska, but more okay. like with a heavy backbeat, so more okay. like hip hop ish. Okay. Yeah. So reggae, hip hop, yeah. rather than okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So what did you what did you start off playing? Like where did you begin? So okay, so. I mean, it all began at the very early age of like eight, mm-hmm. you know, but then, you know, you go through all your childhood and everything. And there was like, you know, I had a love of punk rock, um, but I went to music school in Minneapolis. Okay. Oddly enough, um, I went to music school there. And at the time I was really into um, like Led Zeppelin, the mm-hmm. Beatles, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. Right. And, um, and that was kind of how this band became so we all they used to do this thing on mondays you'd get a chart and everybody in each department so drums guitar bass singers you get this chart on monday you spend the whole week learning it and on friday you get together in this giant auditorium and then the instructors would pick one person from just each, random yeah and they'd build a band and then you had to play the song um so they built the band we played the song we killed it got off stage and the singer goes um yeah i'm making this record uh, you guys want to be a part of it? We all said yes. We finished. you're like, of course we do. Yeah, we all it, just killed it on it that was, song. Yeah, it was like a, it, it just was felt ph- good. Phenomenal. Yeah. So we made the record, gave it to somebody at the school who had some. Uh, everybody Ties, at the school, yeah, was part of the music industry. So uh, they passed it off to somebody at Atlantic, and we got like a phone call, and they were like, "We love this record, and uh, we want to sign you guys, and we want you to come to New York," and that was it. And it, so. Like I was in school for like two years and I left, you know, mm. we didn't, I didn't even finish that school. So yeah, we took off to New York, made a couple of records with that band. Um, and then that was at the time when like the music industry was taking a turn. So Napster had happened. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Record sales weren't happening. So we ended up getting dropped. Um, from there, we all were living together. So it was like this tumultuous thing band broke up because you didn't quite everybody things weren't working out the way you maybe all thought right. and so everybody's stressed and right. so then tensions and people yeah. start yelling at each other for no particular reason and blah 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 yeah yeah so i i went on an audition and i actually did play metal at the time at, at for some metal band and through them i met this girl um she was a child and she because she was like hanging around and she worked for disney she as a singer sort okay. of like a hannah montana type gotcha and so i audition for her band got the gig and then i worked for disney and rough nation records for like the next seven years oh, fun. touring and, and doing stuff like that so jumping from one tour to the next always like a higher gun you yeah know, but still that's got to be like good consistent money if you're working for disney yeah. and yeah disney's hands down was the best experience that's, I've, yeah. I've heard other people say that i've mm-hmm. i've heard other people say that their experience with disney was really good like yeah. that they're treated really well the best transportation, hotels, mm-hmm. per diems, you know. Yeah, best. Yeah, money, yeah, everything. Yeah, top was, of the line. Everything was it. Yep, yeah, so that was good. And then um, I actually, I came off the road one last time from that, and I was like, I'm, I'm done dealing with stage moms. I want to do, I want to play reggae. So I mm-hmm. made a reggae band in New York, and we were there for a couple, like probably another year or so. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to my hometown, which is San Diego. Um, I packed up. And, 
went to San Diego and I told the the band and two of the two of the four members came out with me and we continued to play and we did shows up and down the west coast uh, for a while with you know just the dirty heads a bunch of you know up this was back when all that was kind of coming out mm -hmm. like, um, so we we're doing shows like that and then uh, I came out here to do some recording and I was supposed to be here for about four months and it's been 12 years <laughs> A long four months. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that that can happen. I was yeah. supposed to be out here for a year. It's been ten now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I met, I met we're not going to stay. We're just going to rent an apartment for right. a little while before you know it. We're looking for houses. Well, I met my uh, my now ex-wife during that four month period, and, um, and we got together, mm -hmm. got married. I have three children from that three marriage, kids. and. Um, and so that was the reason for staying. That subsequently ended, and I'm still here because my kids are here. So, yeah. um, life goes on. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. Yeah. That's the thing about life. Yeah. Um, so, how long ago were you married? It's been four year, four and a half years ago. Oh, so you were you've been separated or divorced for divorced, and a half, divorced, four and a half. yeah, almost. Yeah. And three Spot. kids. Yep. Uh, how old are your kids? My kids are five six and eight okay yeah, so they're so pretty pretty young yeah <laughs> yeah you're like yeah. i'm bored <laughs> one baby just isn't enough uh. i'd love to have a couple kids and <laughs> carriers that sounds awful by the way <laughs> it, it, i mean it was hectic for yeah. a while you know yeah. but they're all they're at a place now where it's like it's getting easy you yeah. know it's getting easier um a good majority of the time you know i was, as, I was changing diapers as a single dad so yeah you know it's, it's not for the not the for week. the week yeah. yeah um i have kids mm -hmm. i you may or may be don't know that i don't know i don't talk about it online but you, um i do i have three um i raised my nephews 18 and then my other two are 12 and 9. okay um so yeah i get it i mean i think i've been separated for about four years and a little four and a half mm. probably about similar time frame uh, my kids weren't that little you know when it happened but it's hard it's hard mm. to like go through that and yeah maneuver being from with somebody to being a single parent and having those responsibilities but um i'd have it no other way <laughs> now that i'm i am where i'm at i'm like i would never go back <laughs> i'll probably edit that out but i'm just telling you <laughs> i don't want to be disrespectful to him like he's great like me and my ex get along quite well yeah. but um yeah. do you and your ex get along well we're nearing that stage. Okay. Yeah, we're. Uh, so it was very tough at the beginning. Yeah, it was pretty tumultuous. Yeah. Yeah, pretty tumultuous split. Um, now we're finally, I think, getting to that place of like, okay, we're just trying to co-parent. Right. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't really care what happens in your life. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, go do what you do. But, but when it comes to the kids, we got to be a solid, yeah. united front type of situation. So now it's starting to it's starting to ease up. Good. You know. That makes it easier. It makes everything easier. Yeah. It makes it easier on the kids where you guys aren't, you know, bickering and fighting. And right. Makes it easier for you guys to make decisions together or what have you and mm. be on the same page. Mm. Um, and now that you've been single for four years um, and you're having to maneuver this world of being single as a parent, mm. which is a whole different ball game. Um, I'm not going to ask you how old you are. I can, I'm kind of guesstimating just by kind of the, some of the conversation. We're mm. probably pretty close in age. Mm -hmm. um, so what what is your method of dating? Do you date? Less now than I did. I think yeah. when I, like for straight out of the gate, you know what I mean? I uh -huh. think I was trying to probably overcompensate. <laughs> <laughs> you're you know like i'm gonna I mean? fill like, the void like i gotta figure out like <laughs> if i still got it and right, the whole right. thing you know or whatever but um yeah so i mean i did the whole you know what do you call it online dating did I, you do like the, the whole apps, tinder tinder, mm -hmm. tinder bumble i did all that stuff okay not right away i think somebody a friend of mine was like hey man you you single. this is what ha this is what people do now right right um we had to learn and so we had to learn but that yeah but that eventually <laughs> i mean to me that it led to you know many dates, mm -hmm. but it it was it eventually became like a video game where I was bored. I had right. ten minutes. I would yep. be like swiping, I, I swiping, would do that. swiping, swiping, swiping. Mm -hmm. You know that type of thing. So I just I, I feel like, like everybody does. That. Yeah, it's kind of an addiction, just right. a swipe. Right. Yeah. No real intention <laughs> at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got rid of all the apps, and I yeah. was like, you know what? If I'm gonna meet somebody, I'm gonna meet them in person. That's 
just what I foresee. Right. You know, which is hard. I don't know about your experience with that. You can tell me about it. But in my experience, I have found I've met a couple guys organically. Um, and it tends to go better because you're meeting them organically. And so you're, you're not like it's not like a date that you're set up. It's like you're meeting them and you're like, hey, hold on. I kind of like you. Yeah. But um, I, it's so difficult to do that. Mm. It's so difficult to find people in your bubble, in, in my bubble at least, um, of people that I'm around daily. Mm. <laughs> I don't see very many people that are dateable. Mm. So yeah. I don't know about for you. You, you kind of have some different types of jobs where you have more social, like especially working, you know, going to school. Yeah. You're around a lot of you know women all the time and as a single guy you know they're probably like come out with us let's go do this let you know you probably have more social pull yeah there there Um, is i don't (laughs) (laughs) there there is that um i expressly do not date in the school zone probably a good Um, idea yeah just you know, it's, and, and it's I, the whole don't dip your pen in the company ink. Correct. That's my favorite saying about dating in, in the workplace. It's, yeah. it's often not a great job nope. or a great idea nope. to date somebody that you see regularly because then when it doesn't go well. No. And then you're stuck with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, but I'm, you know, I'm out in the world quite a bit. Um, and here's the other thing, too, is I'm I'm good being by myself. Yeah. So I'm OK. I, I will go out to eat. I'll go sit at a restaurant. I'll go. I'll go sit at a bar and hang mm-hmm. out and just, you know, and be okay. Cause I'm okay talking to people randomly right. without any kind of preconceived anything, you right. know? So, um, that part of it has been okay. Um, I'm not always meeting, you know, new fantastic women, you right. know, to date, but, um, but it hasn't been bad. And the, the other, the other aspect of it too, is, um, like I said, there was a lot of, a lot of like the dating apps and, you know, kind of like this rush to be out in the dating world right. and now I'm like kind of pulled back the reins and I'm like okay I'm just gonna it, it, I'm just gonna relax focus on you focus you're, on you're really focusing on you because right. you're in school and you're right. re- kind of organizing your career and where you want to be so yeah 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 so it's 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 good I mean I went I went on a date like I guess like I guess it was last weekend mm-hmm. um it's fine you know <laughs> Sounds like it. Sounds like it went really well. Can't wait to see her again. <laughs> you know, it was fine, but it was, uh, you know, it was one of those things where, um, you know, we got to talking and stuff, and we had a nice conversation. We had a, a you know, a great evening. Hung out for probably longer than than expected, right. and then, um, then at the end of it, it's like we reached out like one other day, you know, and then yeah. and then it just kind of fizzled. Fizzled. So. Yeah, I, I mean, and that happens. I feel. Do you? I mean, I don't know when you dated more regularly. I, I, my story is a little bit like yours, actually. I, I kind of when I started doing it, you do kind of almost get addicted to it. Mm. You're like, I'm gonna do it, and well, this person and this person. Oh, that's interesting, and I want to see what happens. You know, like mm. you kind of, it's like a weird little new obsession. Mm-hmm. And I went out on a lot of dates at first, and um, I had to learn some lessons. <laughs> <laughs> There's some rules I've developed. And lessons I've learned from dating online, yep, yep. but um, which I'm sure you <laughs> you probably have too. Um, but uh, then I kind of just got to a point where I'm like, this is not. I'm just I can't right now. The actual I, the actual um, dating part, like mm-hmm. okay, texting, leading up, like having that conversation, all that stuff, that build up, mm-hmm. that's fine. But the actual act of being on a date is a lot of work it is it's a lot of work dating is a lot of work and i might for say single people who are listening <laughs> i'm telling you listen listen to us it's and not all it's cracked up to be it it's could, a lot of work you know it could be my <laughs> age and how busy i am and everything else but like on monday when we agree to it for, for friday night mm-hmm. friday might come around i might be exhausted right you know what i mean it's been mm-hmm. a long week and yes i'm totally stoked about you know the prospect of meeting you out at this wonderful restaurant but you don't want to get there tired right you don't want to get there and not, and then because then you know you're not going to, your conversation level is right. not going to be at its best. Right. And, yeah. and you're not in a relationship, so you can't just be there, sit there and be like, babe, I'm tired. Like, right. Ooh, let's, yeah. let's eat. You have to have first impression. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I it's just this whole, you know, so, so yeah, so that's you why I don't do it. You have to be your best self. It. That's why I don't do it so and it's often. it's hard. Yeah. Because yeah. it's got, you know, I'm, I got, it's got to be, yeah. you got to gear up for it. Yeah. You know? 
and it's exciting and nerve wracking and it just it takes a lot out it takes a lot out of you to go on a date yeah um just because of all that build up and the conversation and that's a lot of work it, yeah. it is a lot of work to like not always every now and again you have a date where you you know the date kind of carries itself but yeah. not always not always yeah you always. know some of some of them have been some of them have gone very smoothly and yeah. we've, we've hit it off and mm -hmm. next thing you know it's midnight and yeah. you know whatever and it's been it's been great but sometimes it's 7 30 and you got there at seven and you're like shit yeah. you know right so <laughs> you're like well look at the time <laughs> um so the last person that you dated how did you meet her oddly enough I, I, although i said i was going to meet this person you know meet people in person i actually met them through instagram okay yeah uh, it happens. Look, we're sitting here. We're sitting here. That's how we this met. This is how we met through Instagram. Um, but yeah, it was one of those deals. We had some mutual interests, mm -hmm. and I don't even know how it transpired per se. But I think I was looking at this one page that I enjoyed. I saw this person's comment or something, and I clicked on it because I thought I think I thought their comment was funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I clicked on them to see who they were, and then I just happened to reach out and was like, "Hey, you seem pretty cool." I'd like to go and you know have a date or whatever never thinking I'd hear anything back at mm. all you know and then um, it was actually like a couple weeks later then I get a message back saying okay I'll bite you know and then mm. we just kind of struck it up from there so there's some conversation leading up to the actual date you know and yeah. it took a while um, to get there but like I said it was good you know it was yeah it was uh, there's an experience yeah, sometimes it was, it not every date's gonna end up in multiple dates or dating yeah but um sometimes just even though it is work mm -hmm. it, it can be kind of fun and it yeah. can be it's kind of fun to meet new people and yeah. it can be really interesting um i think this is i just realized as i was saying that i'm like i think this is my form of dating <laughs> even though i'm not dating <laughs> i think this is what i've done to replace dating in my life i, I interview people i i just realized that but in a way you're not <laughs> you're not wrong though um, because uh, essentially that's what a date is yeah really it's like a job interview right, right. like who's gonna fit this the, you know the position right. i have open or whatever um and that that leads me to my other thing is that my mindset about the end goal is different than it's ever been yeah you know so i'm not looking to get married mm -hmm. i have the kids yeah i, I did that all that makes a big difference i did all that stuff yeah that makes so a big difference so that's not there's no rush mm -hmm. you know what i mean and and um you know so women of a certain age younger than myself are probably looking to do those things mm -hmm. i'm not so that kind of throws me out of their loop you mm -hmm. know and then uh women who aren't looking to do that um they may still be interested in the idea of marriage at some form you know down the road or right. whatever um not to say that i'm opposed to it but i don't want to do it in the same way that i once did it where there's the contract and the whole deal like right. my my mind nowadays is like okay if i'm gonna be with somebody for the long term we're gonna we're gonna do it because we want to be together I, I don't really necessarily believe in like i don't need to the go government. get married and walk yeah, down the aisle right, and mm -hmm. right you don't you need know. the traditional sense of the word correct yeah i think um, I talk about this a lot because um, whenever I do these interviews, it's often t people who are over, I've, I've interviewed a few younger people, but usually everybody's over the age of 35. Mm. And we all have very different um, mindset by that time. We have kids, mm. we have had marriages a lot of times or long-term relationships. Mm. And so we're not looking, I mean, people are looking for that. Don't get me wrong. Like there's a lot of people who they are, looking for a relationship i get dms all the time that they want to take care of me and <laughs> wife me and i'm not it's not gonna happen god bless you guys but um no so i i know that those people are out there i know those people are out there that do want those long terms but i think that our qualifications and how um and our compromise is different the older we get totally um how we what will allow and what we won't allow yeah. um what we're looking for i think when you have a marriage or you have kids your mind is set in a certain standard for what you want to allow in your life and i, I that makes a big difference and who you're going to date and um how you date yeah even yeah and it you know not to say that it always is this way but there's a good chunk of the dating world that lends itself to like this chaotic behavior that goes on mm -hmm. in a new relationship right mm -hmm. where it's like 
where are you? Blah, blah, blah. You know, that yeah. sort of like craziness that I, I can't have that. You know what I mean? Like, you, I can't have that. It's got to be you're very trying to, like, You mean you're like trying to weed out the people who are like the jealous tendencies right, right, or right. like the, the neurotic texting yeah. and like, how, how come you didn't text me back? It's been five minutes. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, because I've got like 10 jobs and I... <laughs> And my kids. Because I'm going to school and I have three kids and I work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for sure. I um, And I think that's kind of what I was saying too. It's like we, like if you were 20 and you met somebody who's like that, you're like, yeah, she's cool. She's a little quirky, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Like you would let it go a lot of times yeah. because you'd just be like, dude, I'll see you in a little bit. Like it's not a big deal. But now that you're older, you're like, stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're not going to consume my time and my life like that. And I can't have somebody being that needy in my existence yeah. right now well at least that's what i'm getting from you and that's what i how i get about it is that i can't i can't have that intensity yeah yeah i mean uh, and i think i've even been a little intense maybe i don't know if you've ever been intense like that to somebody you've dated i have yeah i have and i think that's where my understanding of it comes into yeah. play you know what i mean because yeah. i know that i've been that yeah to somebody i've been there you know but um <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we all make mistakes, okay? Like I said, I learned a lot. <laughs> it's hard. Like so, and I okay, so back on the on the other opposite end, like you don't want that in your life, but you also have been that to right. somebody else and so you you recognize and I got kicked to the curb. Yeah. <laughs> and you recognize that in yourself and you're like yeah. But I, I won't allow that. Yeah. It's also a growth experience. That has to also be a growth experience for, for all of us too, to, to know that we are recognized that we're doing that in ourselves, so that we, if we do find somebody that's really well suited, then we don't do that mm. or recognize that trait in somebody else that we don't like and be like, oh, I know where this is coming mm. from and I'm not going to deal with that. Yeah. And I, I will admit too, I think I'm a little bit hard to date in certain respects now at this at this point because as much as I like as much as I am around a lot of people mm -hmm. all the time I really really appreciate my alone time my, yeah my time away and that you know I think a lot of times when you're entering into a new courtship or relationship or whatever there's this tendency to just be side by side yeah. and you start to do everything together yeah. and I I don't want that either <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know I, no, I, mean? I get it. I'm I'm the same way. It's um, I mean, we you when you're meeting somebody new, it's exciting, and you should want to want to be around them. I think mm. that's part of the newness and fun of a new relationship. But, um, you know, I what I'm really learning about right now is how to set better boundaries, mm. and that has been difficult for me it's like maybe i would set boundaries for somebody and then not set boundaries for somebody else because mm -hmm. i maybe really like being around them um so i i've had to learn how to create boundaries and live by them a little bit better um to create better relationships i think yeah um boundaries is a tough one you know it's something that i struggle with myself um in a lot of ways even just in friendships or mm -hmm. you know um, working relationships that you have you know like people think they can you not that not that they think but ultimately you're allowing them to do certain things that right. you might not even appreciate but you don't know how to kind of you know nicely without upsetting anybody which i'm working on you yeah know, i'm working on lots of things but yeah, that's, yeah. boundaries is we're at all the top of the works list. in progress <laughs> <laughs> we'll all continue to working be working on ourselves for years to come probably but well it's funny yeah. too because i was having this conversation with a woman today i was doing her hair and and it, we got on this topic of you spend so many years of your life like, looking forward looking looking towards whatever it is right mm -hmm. and then at some point all of a sudden you're like looking back and going like oh but you know and it's not not necessarily regret but like looking back going like man this whole time has flown by and now i'm at this space right um you know what can I do different and you know retrospective right. thinking a lot of a lot of uh, not a lot of but another friend of mine has said she's really into like you know like I, I call it voodoo but it's just you know mysticism mysticism and stuff but she always mm, she talks about a physical a, a Saturn return for men they call it a Saturn return a lot of people would equate it to like a midlife crisis um, Ultimately, what it is is you you're, you you shift in what's things of importance. Mm -hmm. You know, you shift in how you want to deal with people, what your expectations are, um, who you ultimately want to be, who you want to finish out the rest of 
you're running your around the sun. With, yeah. yeah, you know, and uh, I think I'm in that. You know, I'm not doing anything crazy. There's no, no. sports cars, but it's right, but I'm, right, right. I'm more mindful mm-hmm. about you know my interactions with people and and you know the takeaway. Yeah, and know? I think that's great. I think, um, I mean, I think that sounds like a really positive place to be. Um, yeah. I think, you know, hopefully most people go through that. I'm. I don't know that um, everybody does. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that probably should take more time to spend time with themselves and think about themselves. But um, I think it's a really positive thing when you can actually recognize that you're doing that because mm-hmm. um, it will make you better for somebody else. Yeah, um, It will make you better for yourself, for your kids. Right. Um, but it will also make you find somebody that's better for you in the long term, totally. in my opinion. Totally. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. <laughs> We're not a counselor of any kind, but it just seems to work out well when people can yeah. be introspective and think about the choices they've made and how that it can affect their future. Think about what they want to do in their future to be better for themselves. Yeah. And then, I mean, the other antithesis to all this stuff, too, is I, I'm raising two girls. You mm-hmm. know, I have a son, but mm-hmm. I also have two little girls. Where's the son in the lineup? He's, He's the oldest. oldest. Okay. He's the oldest. And when I had him, it was like, I'm a man. I'm a son. <laughs> ah, you know what I mean? I've made a boy. Then, Carry on the gene. Yeah. And then I had, you know, with each girl now, mm-hmm. it's been this whittling away of that, you know, I wouldn't say whittling away of the masculinity, but whittling away of all the rough edges. Right. And, and, um, it's it's kind of put a lot of things into perspective you know as a man dating women Mm -hmm. um not that i was ever like horrible to anybody but but it really you know when i'm what my actions are nowadays it's like well this is you're somebody's daughter right Mm -hmm. you know as we sit here together you're somebody's daughter just like my daughter is going to be with some dude at some point sitting somewhere you know what i mean like right and and i firmly believe in you know everything that you put out into the universe you get back as far as energies and all this stuff Mm so you know a lot of that is in the forefront of my mind about you know what kind of things do i hope for my daughters Mm -hmm. and you know am i able to be that for somebody else's daughter you know right so i think it's been a great experience having these girls you know Mm -hmm. it's been it's been cool